advisors are operating in a quite a challenging environment when it comes to CIPs. Um, there's a lot of regulatory focus on client needs and objectives. And so one of the core things that advisors are going to have to focus on is how the advice that they're giving um, takes those needs and objectives into account. So from a pensions point of view, one of the hot topics at the moment is around the, the separation between pre-retirement and post-retirement um, and the different objectives and needs that that can drive. And that's something that advisors are really going to have to take time to understand and particularly in the context of their own client base. Um, once they know what the objectives are that they're trying to achieve, they need to think about the investment environment. Um, and so into 2020, what I think we're going to be experiencing is uh, relatively low growth and potentially some quite high risk. There's a lot of uncertainty in the market at the moment. Um, so advisors really need to think about how they can build a robust investment um, proposition which is going to survive and thrive in that sort of environment. If that's not challenging enough, there are other considerations. So you need to think about value for money and evidencing that for both the clients and the regulator. Um, and then in light of some of the events and headlines that have been going on in 2019, I think there's going to be a much greater focus on governance and transparency. Um, with regard to investment propositions. One of the things advisors are going to be worried about is how they can find sufficient growth while guarding against volatility. Um, and so they really need to be thinking about how their clients are adequately rewarded for the risk that they're taking. There's a commonly used economic theory called modern portfolio theory. And the fundam fundamental hypothesis there is that you can use diversification as a tool to remove some of the risk from a portfolio without necessarily removing some of the expected return. Um, and so what advisors are looking for is a portfolio which maximizes the amount of return that they're expecting for a given level of risk. Um, in terms of how they do that, diversification is key um, and they might want to look to a broader range of assets than the traditional equities and bonds. They might want to look at different asset classes like maybe property or commodities. Illiquid assets have a really important role to play in multi-asset portfolios. Um, they are good diversifiers, so property is a really good example. Um, it's a very good diversifier diversifier against some of the alternative growth asset classes like equities. And um, so in the long term, the dynamics might be similar, but in the short and medium term, the dynamics are slightly different. Um, the other thing to think about with illiquid assets are that there's slightly different risks to consider, so liquidity risk. Now, in the pension space, certainly in pre-retirement and a lot of the time in post-retirement as well, investments aren't going to be touched for 10 or 15 years or even more. Um, and so I think that being rewarded for taking on liquidity risk for those types of investors is potentially appropriate. I think that ESG factors are going to become more and more important when you're thinking about a CIP. Um, it's an interesting consideration because each individual is going to have different opinion about what ESG means to them and how important it is to them. Um, so you've got a wide spectrum. Some people might not have thought of it or they might have decided actively that that's not something that they want to take into consideration. At the other side of the spectrum, you have people who um, think that it's the most important factor and they might even be um, willing to sacrifice some returns in order to ensure that their investments are managed in a uh, responsible way. And then of course you've got everything in between. I think the way that the world is going at the moment, investors are going to care about this. Um, and so it's up to us as an industry and for advisors to really think about how and to what extent do we embed ESG into the overall decision-making process.